We welcome you to this time of worship with Carlisle, Radville, and McClure United Churches. As we gather, we acknowledge that our buildings are on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the treaty agreements. Carlisle United Church is on Treaty 2, Radville United Church is on Treaty 4, and McClure United Church is on Treaty 6. As treaty people, we pay our respect to the history, spirituality, and culture of the Indigenous peoples of this land. McClure United Church also acknowledges that we are an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. We strive to welcome people of all gender identities and sexual orientations. We give thanks to God for this opportunity to gather together for reflection, song, and prayer. It is our hope that everyone will feel the warmth of welcome and God's love today. Morning, friends. Nice to be with you. Deborah's uh, having a little break this uh, weekend. And so you have me for the whole morning, so hopefully that's okay. <laughs> anyway, it is uh, it is nice to be here. It's always good to come to McClure. I understand that the bathrooms are under construction over here. Uh, they're usable, but you might find some dust laying around. So that's one of the announcements for this morning. Um, the other, I suppose, maybe before I get into announcements, in case there's visitors here, is to say welcome to McClure. This is a pretty friendly place. I'm a visitor myself and show up every now and again, but if you're a visitor this morning, it's good to have you. There's often coffee next door at the end of the service if you would like to participate in that. And we shared the service with two uh, partners out in rural Saskatchewan, in Carlisle and Radville, and so good morning to them. And uh, together uh, they join us by technology and uh, we'll be sharing in the service. Deborah's made me all these notes here. I'm trying to keep up. Um, <laughs> there's also live stream and YouTube, which means this service will be available later in the week. So if you happen to be watching it later in the week, good day to you as well. Um, and I didn't introduce myself, although most of you know me. I'm Brian Walton. I had the privilege of working here for a couple of years, filling in a little bit. And uh, now I get the chance every now and again to come back and visit. So that's great. Um, a few announcements that Deborah left me to share, and I know some others have announcements to share. One is the big shred. I think the signs out front is coming up on May 6th, fundraiser for McClure Place Association. So if you've been saving up all your papers, I guess that's the day to bring them. Uh, the annual report is uh, about to be prepared, and submissions are due tomorrow, May 1st. Deborah says thanks to Diane Hogg and Sheila Kruger for having taken up the task of organizing a photo directory. That'll happen in the fall. Um, apparently the chairs can be stacked at the end of the service. And we want to acknowledge the flowers that are here on the communion table this morning. They've been placed by the Johnston and Bug families to the glory of God and in loving memory of family members who are no longer with us. Let's uh, invite others to come and share announcements this morning. Wow, I haven't been on this side of the microphone for three years, I think, so it seems a little odd. Um, so I'm uh, here on behalf of our good friend Carol Claypool, who is attending her granddaughter's wedding shower. And every year Carol gives us at McClure a little shove to remember the food bank for the citywide food bank drive in May. And this year we're asking McClure folks to bring something for the blue bin. And yes, it is another bin for us uh, out there in the lobby. Um, she would like us to bring uh, something for the food bank every Sunday in the month of May. And um, it would be great if we could fill the bin every Sunday. So if you folks can remember your food next Sunday, that would be great. And then if we're on the topic of food, last week we thoroughly enjoyed the Camp Sunday presented for us by our own Terry Lindsley. And I 
I don't see Terry here today. She must be resting. Uh, that was such a great, great time we had together with the singing and, and the prayers. Um, and then we ha hosted a hot dog sale after that. And her service must have inspired us because we raised over $950 uh, for that Camp Tapa Wingo. And I, I practiced that. <laughs> yep. And that's on Candle Lake. And if any of you are interested in the newsletter, this month is some information about the camp, if anybody in your family might uh, enjoy going to that camp. And both the food bank and the uh, Camp Tapawingo food, uh, fundraiser, both of them, if you want to donate uh, cash to them, they are still available. You can make your donations at the office. So thanks again for supporting both of those, and we'll hopefully we'll see your food in the bin next week. Thanks. Good morning, my name is Christy Elliott. I'm here on behalf of Dinner Theatre, again. We've closed the book on our production of Anne and Green Gables, and now we're turning our attention to our next production, where your McClure Players has a new offering coming your way with another novel turned movie turned Broadway musical. This show might want to make you fly a kite, clean a chimney, or feed the birds. Or maybe it'll just make you say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That's right, Mary Poppins is flying into McClure in March of 2024. We can't wait to make magic with you again next year. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. I was too late to get a ticket for this year's production, but when I, you give me lots of warning now for next year, but uh, I did hear that it was a great success, and uh, I heard that actually in other churches where I was as well, so the word's out. Well, as we begin worship this morning, allow me to... So we enter into worship with our call to worship this morning. As we gather in this Easter season with hope and expectation, let us affirm the blessings we have received. God is alive. Love is alive. Hope is alive. We are alive. God's spirit dwells within us and will never leave us. And together, let us share in prayer. God of all creation, you are the source of all that is. Your energy fills the earth. You are the vitality of life and the one who heals what is broken. You are the song the whole earth sings, and this day and in this place, we join our voices in thanksgiving for all that was, that is, and that yet shall be. Amen. Our gathering song.
prayer of confession. Come to us, God, like fresh water, softening the soil of a parched and weary land. We confess that hurts and disappointments harden our hearts and that frustrations and failures dry us out. Come to us, God, with life-giving power. Free us from resentment, reluctance, and reserve. And remind us that in your forgiveness, we are free, forgiven, that we may be forgiven. Seeking the way of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And the prayer of assurance, the stone is rolled away, we are released. The tomb is empty. We can be free. Christ is risen. Life can be full. Thanks be to God. Our prayer of illumination. O God, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. And our first scripture this morning is taken from John, chapter 20, verses 19 and 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And our second reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 43 through 47. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. 
They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Pray with me for a moment. May the ancient stories that we've heard so touch our lives that they inspire our living and encourage us in the way that Jesus showed. Amen. I clearly remember August 19th, 1965. The night before, my father had collapsed from a heart attack on the kitchen floor of our home. No amount of prayer or a medical intervention could reverse the reality of what had happened. And so on August 19th, I awoke to a new reality, and all the confusion, fear, and uncertainty that came with it. 
August 19, 1965 might be the closest association, the closest experience that I have with the experience of Jesus' friends and disciples who awoke on the Saturday following Good Friday. They had loved Jesus. Many had devoted their lives to him, abandoning all that they had known so that they could follow and learn from him. They'd eaten meals with him, witnessed his extraordinary acts of healing, and sat at his feet as he taught. Some had embraced him. One had washed his feet with her hair. Many loved him. They had hoped for so much. It seemed that Jesus, that in Jesus, God had answered their prayers and that the world was filled with possibilities. But now it was Saturday morning. And all that seemed to, all that hope, all that possibility seemed to have ended with a deep sigh on a hill in Golgotha. In the liturgical language of the church, names have been given to these high and holy days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Ironically, the term Good Friday describes the day of crucifixion, and the name Easter is given to the Sunday when his tomb was discovered empty. The day in between these two events, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, to my knowledge, didn't get a liturgical title. As I pondered this reality, a name came to me that seemed to fit the facts and feelings of that day. And so I've named it Uncertain Saturday. Uncertain Saturday was filled with grief, confusion, and fear. The Bible takes note of this fear. The Gospel of John records, When it was evening on that Saturday, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked out of fear. We read how this fear carried over from Saturday into the early hours of Sunday morning, for Luke records the women who went to the tomb were terrified. The Gospel of Matthew records that despite the appearance of the resurrected Jesus, the women fled the tomb for they were afraid. Those were the feelings that I experienced on August 19, 1965. I awoke in the midst of disbelief that my father had died, I anxiously watched as my mother's grief threatened to overwhelm her. My father's presence, the stability that he brought to our home, the income that our family relied upon was gone. Uncertainty and, yes, fear were the prevailing emotions of that uncertain Saturday experience in our household. I imagine that you have also had uncertain Saturday experiences, perhaps many of them. It seems impossible to live a life that is completely free of struggle, heartache, and fear. I recall one particular week when I was the pastor at St. Martin's Church and three separate parishioners showed up in my office sharing their uncertain Saturday experiences. One told me about finding herself that day in a welfare office applying for social assistance after her husband had abandoned her and she was out of funds. Another came in and told me that he had been to the health clinic and requested an AIDS test after discovering that one of his partners had been diagnosed with the illness. Still another woman came days after an appointment at the cancer clinic where she learned that the lump in her breast was malignant. 
Sometimes the feelings of uncertain Saturdays occur from less personal but equally challenging events. I think of our indigenous neighbors whose uncertain Saturdays lasted for generations as they watched at first their land and then their children being taken from them. When I look at our neighbors in the United States these days, it appears to me that the uncertain Saturday of pandemic pressures and global changing global realities have created fear and anger in their nation. As blue collar workers lose jobs to the global economy and the disparity between the rich and the working class deepens, it seems that many there feel fearful and angry, looking for someone to blame. They direct their anger on their black neighbors, on new immigrants, and even upon women seeking reproductive security. Stuck in an uncertain Saturday, they seem to want to go backwards to a time that no longer exists. In our own lives, we've probably met people who seem to have never beyond never moved beyond the angst of uncertain Saturdays, choosing to live smaller lives, rigid in their outlook, and critical of those who have moved on. Makes me wonder what the friends of Jesus were thinking on that uncertain Saturday. Perhaps some were planning an escape, lest the powers that arrested Jesus were now to pursue them. Perhaps some were pondering a return to their old way of life, getting into a fishing boat. Perhaps some were so confused and filled with grief that they just didn't know what to think. It's unlikely on that uncertain Saturday that any of them could imagine the events that we heard about this morning from the book of Acts. Within months, perhaps even weeks, this same group of friends who lived amidst the struggles of that first uncertain Saturday had discovered hope, possibility, purpose. It's such an amazing witness that it warrants being read every Easter season. Listen again to the testimony that we heard from Acts. It says, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, especially any who had need. Day by day, they spent time together in the temple. They broke bread in their homes and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. And so it appears that we have a choice on the uncertain Saturdays of our lives. We can become stuck in the struggle cower in fear, seethe with anger, or we can learn from Jesus' friends and prepare ourselves for resurrection. There is a choice at the end of uncertain Saturdays. One need not retreat to fear and anger. Resurrection is possible. Opening to the Spirit, sharing our resources, breaking bread together, can usher us from the uncertainty of the Saturday into the possibilities of Easter Sunday. In the days that followed, August 19, 1965, my mother and I were supported by our extended family, well supported, and I found a warm welcome within the Christian community. And even though mom never really embraced the church, she often testified to me that the only way she got through those days was with the sure and certain knowledge that God was at her side. Despite having lived as a shy and introverted homemaker, she found her way into the workforce where she met new friends and expanded her view of the world. She found a purpose that enabled her to hope again. And although we would have given anything to have Dad revived on that difficult August evening, 
we did experience resurrection as each of us moved beyond the uncertain Saturday into what life still had to offer. As a pastor, I attempted to stand beside that trio of parishioners who visited me that one week during my St. Martin's ministry. The woman abandoned by her husband qualified for social assistance, but within a year she had re-entered the workforce, reclaimed her inherent skills, got married again. Man was declared free of AIDS. He had not been infected, but he chose to pursue a more permanent relationship, one that's lasted for over these 20 years. And the woman in the cancer clinic endured the challenges of surgery and chemotherapy, but continues to live and enjoy her grandchildren. Even our indigenous neighbors, it would seem, who spent years amidst the uncertain Saturday experience are celebrating a kind of resurrection as their spirituality, their art, their politics, and their passion to be caretakers of the land arises in our midst. I'm not suggesting a Pollyanna approach to the troubles that beset us. Life can be difficult. Grief and lament are legitimate responses to life's struggles. But we need not stay in the uncertain Saturdays. Jesus' friends showed us how to move from uncertain Saturday into resurrection. First, they recognized and cherished the life they had had with Jesus. Sometimes struggles and uncertain Saturdays cause us to lose sight of the blessings we have known. I sometimes wonder if the resurrection accounts in the scriptures are as much about recalling Jesus' presence as about an appearance of a resurrected body. Remember the story of the two disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus, recalling their times with Jesus and how they had lived with him the story suggests that they meet a stranger on the path who travels with them. And later they recognize that this was the resurrected Christ. But maybe more importantly, the disciples reported that their hearts had burned within them as they remembered life with Jesus. If we can touch the blessings that preceded our troubles, we can often put our troubles into perspective and find much to be thankful for in our lives. As I continue into old age, I think to myself that my task is to end well. And there's lots of endings that come with old age. But I think the task is to end well. As I look back, I can be thankful for so much in my life. I hope when a new set of struggles appear, that I might remember, remember the blessings, the first step towards a kind of resurrection. The other wisdom that comes from Jesus' friends is that they embrace the way of life that he had taught. In some respects, it was a life focused on personal peace, just communities, and the sharing of love. That's what got resurrected in the early community. The church has this story about the risen Christ ascending to heaven after 40 days. But the community that knew Jesus and continued after his death lived a life that was modeled on what he taught. In the testimonies from the book of Acts, we read how they enacted his lifestyle by praying together, sharing their possessions and looking out for those in need. When we are clear about our purpose, we can find our way beyond uncertainty. I think I've told you once before in a previous sermon sitting outside the funeral home a few days after my dad had died and mom, this shy introverted homemaker saying to me, I will find work. We will be okay. I don't know where she found the courage to utter those words, but they were true. She found work. We were okay. 
Indigenous elders never sacrifice their spirituality or their commitment to the land, despite generations of trauma. The resurrection that we're witnessing in their communities is a direct result of the prevailing wisdom that they never relinquished. They had a purpose, a vision, to care for one another and the land, and it carried them forward. The final thing that I learn from the way Jesus' friends moved from Good Friday despair to resurrection is that they did it together. The book of Acts tells us that they shared things in common, they worshiped together, they broke bread together. The other day I stumbled across something called the Good Life Project. You maybe have heard of it. It's a project of Harvard University that studied 700 people from the age of 19 through to old age. You can watch a TED talk on it. But the current director of the study, because it's lasted so long, they've had five directors. The current director of the study reports that the one clear truth that comes out of this study is that relationships are the most important thing in life. They discovered that regardless of wealth or status, for they studied Harvard students, but they also went into the slums of Boston and followed people who lived in trying circumstances. And they discovered that relationships, regardless of wealth or status, contributed to physical well-being, mental acuity, and an overall satisfaction with life. Family, friends, and communities in whom we invest ourselves and who invest in us make life worth living, even through and beyond uncertain Saturdays. In some ways, the church is a legacy of those early Christian communities who decided that we needed one another that we needed to be together. When churches are able to remember Jesus and enact the mission of love, they contribute to full lives and help us all withstand and move beyond those uncertain times. In this Easter time of the church, we tell and retell the stories of the empty tomb, the stories of the risen Christ, the stories of his followers' resurrection from their Saturday of grief and despair. If only we had been there, how our hearts might have burned within us. But God has given us the spirit of resurrection that moves us beyond our own struggles into new lives shaped and informed by the way of Jesus and by the love that he inspired within us, a love for one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.
neglected to ask Deborah if we bring the offering forward yet. No. All right, then we're going to recognize that we are generous, hopefully with our gifts, and that the church turns that money into actions of love and mission. Let us pray. We acknowledge now our offerings and ask for God's blessing. This is the offering of our time, talent, and treasure. May these gifts be used with wisdom and with justice in the church and throughout the world. In the name of the risen one, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. exhale that which worries us and would impede our path. God of life, you stay with us through the uncertain Saturdays and into the Easter Sundays of our lives. Today we recall the many resurrections we have known in our lives. For many of us, we think way back to school worries or exams that frightened us, and how we have lived beyond those childhood experiences. Some of us recall the burdens of early adulthood, forming relationships, finding work, establishing ourselves, or all the ways that you walked with us and brought us to where we are today. We give thanks for the times when we felt overwhelmed by the loss of a loved one or an unfulfilling workplace or a health challenge. You sustained us with good friends, loving family, and even the support of this church. And for it all, we give thanks for opening us to new opportunities, for gifting us with new friends, for placing resolve and determination in our hearts. We give you thanks. For all the ways in which you have been resurrected into new possibilities and new life, we praise you. For the timeless story of Jesus becoming Christ, who survived the oppressive powers of Good Friday, and was born anew into the hope and witness of the disciples. We praise you. We trust in the yet-to-be-discovered life that awaits us all. Still, we know that there are many this day living in the midst of struggle and uncertainty. In places far from us, people live in the midst of war and destruction. In places much closer to us, people live with a shortage of food or shelter. We know some struggle with addiction, family discord, worries about adolescent children or aging parents. 
Some of us worry about our own health concerns. Others struggle to recover. In the midst of it all, God, we pray that you might bring your spirit of peace, that you might grant the determination needed to live until a time of resurrection. Use each of us, O oh God, as agents of resurrection, offering actions of justice, occasions for solidarity, true friendship. Now in a moment of quiet, We still our souls and open them to you, O oh God. Some of us reveal to you a struggle that we are currently living with. Others reveal to you a celebration for the resurrections we have known and the life that feels good. Whatever it is we bring to you, O oh God, we pray that you will receive it and stand with us. Trusting in the way that Jesus revealed, we continue by singing his words. him I think it's true spring has come And now may the blessing of God, the great and creating one, the saving Son, Jesus the Christ, and the comforting Holy Spirit surround you and hold you this day and always. Amen.